All right, let's get back to the uh, 2020 election. Mike Bloomberg yesterday uh, realizing that, um, oh, people are aware uh, of apparently those video cameras and those audio recorders were actually running when I was speaking uh, years ago, a couple years ago, when I was bragging about uh, how we would throw 16 to 25-year-old uh, black men up against the wall. It's a way to protect everybody. This is Xerox a description. Is Xerox a description. He literally said that. And uh, yeah, we played the audio uh, this, uh, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, after that audio uh, was, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't leaked. It was apparently just sitting on YouTube, but nobody had bothered to look for it. Ben Dixon uh, started to um, uh, send it around. Mike Bloomberg uh, tweeted out, I have apologized for taking too long to understand the impact of stop and frisk on black and Latino communities. I inherited stop and frisk. In an effort to stop gun violence, it was overused. I cut it back by 95%. I should have cut it back sooner. Let's just look at that exactly what he's talking about there. He did inherit stop and frisk. And when he did, it was 100,000 stops a year in 2002. Then in 2003, he ramped it up to 160,000 stops. That is a 160% increase. Then in 2004, he ramped it up to 313,000. That is a 300% increase in two years. Then it was 352. By 2006, it was 500,000. That's a 500% increase. Five Contemplate this for a moment. There are 365 days in the year. For there to be 506,000 stops in a year, you're talking over a thousand frisks, stops and frisks a day. No Sundays off, no Christmas, no Thanksgiving. Every day, over a thousand people stopped and frisked. That was maintained in 20, uh, 2007, 472. Then back up in 2008, 540,000. 2009, 580,000. 2010, 600,000. By 2011, there were over 2,000 stop and frisks every day. Now we know where these were taking place. Probably within a mile or two radius. Think about this. We're talking maybe a mile or two square, square miles. 2,000 a day. More than that. But we were led to believe by Michael Bloomberg as he recalled this after the time that he supposedly ramped it down in 2013 to 190,000, that was incidentally after a court case that said, stop it. Now, in 2014 and 15, when he's looking back on this, because remember now, he's telling us that he ramped it down because he, he realized at one point it was a problem. But in 2015, well after he was outside of uh, the mayor's office, he's still justifying it by saying, this is where the guns were. We did this. We wanted to catch the guns. In 2011, when there were over 2,000 stop and frisks a day, if you had a kid who was 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old, I have a 14-year-old daughter. A lot of her friends come over, 15-year-old boys. The idea that when they walked out of my apartment, because they've come to visit my daughter, that there is an extraordinary chance that they're going to get stopped, thrown up against the wall by a cop. Because there's 2,000 a day. 2,000 a day. There's no chance over the course of a month that the, one of these kids doesn't come over and say, uh, yeah, no, I got stopped. No chance. Zero chance. How many guns did they find to justify throwing these kids up against the wall? 819 in 2011. 
Not 819,000. Not 8,190. 819. Put, bring up a calculator. That's, that's less than half the number of stops that they would do on a single day. So what, is, what, what do I do? 819 divided by 685,724? And that's going to give me, right? I think you go divided by... All right, this is a bad calculator. What kind of calculator is this? What kind of... Where'd you get that calculator? There's one on your computer. There's, what are you doing? You're getting me a mortgage or something? Divided by 685... Seven two four. No, no, seven two four. Point oh oh. So we're talking point oh one percent, not one percent. Point oh one percent. Yeah, that's like a one hundredth of a gun per a stop. A thousandth of a gun per yeah. stop. That's just nuts. That's just nuts. I want them to live. In 2013, they found 400 guns with almost 200,000 stops. I mean. Well, it's not like the policy has downsides for the people being stopped. I Just like think of the lack of ability to see these kids as human beings. That is the one theme that runs through everything that Bloomberg says and does. Even stuff that I would agree with, like cutting down on sugary drinks. And not just human beings, children. Yeah, I mean, these are... uh, The idea that you got to go through life like that uh, and perceive yourself uh, to be criminal simply because of the way that you look. um, Get to 6A. Well, it was a part of a larger policy to cleanse black and brown working class people from the city so that wealthy developers could come in and make a ton of money. Yep. And it worked pretty well. The Trumpification of New York City. Jamal Bowman is running for uh, Congress against Elliot Engel in New York's 16th district. Uh, I interviewed him uh, some time ago on Ring of Fire Radio. I think it's up on our YouTube channel. Really, really... um, Incredible guy, an educator, um, has done some amazing stuff, I think, up in the Bronx. He uh, tweeted out uh, yesterday, one day driving home from school, I was pulled over by the cops, taken out of my car, handcuffed, placed in the back of a police car, then released without explanation. Bloomberg has not shown he understands the pain he caused in our community at all, at all. The man perceives, um, I think, people in general as being, I would say subhuman, but I think he just thinks he's a deity. Um, Let's play this clip again. Just, I mean, mean, just you need to listen to this. But I also do think that he has, he harbors a particular disregard for people of color, particularly black people. To, to, To state what he states here in this interview at WR in 2013... And again, he was saying this stuff as late as 2015 that we know of in public. They just keep saying, oh, it's a disproportionate percentage of a particular ethnic group. That may be, but it's not a disproportionate percentage of those who witnesses and victims describe as committing the murder. In that case, incidentally, I think we disproportionately stop whites too much and minorities too little. Um, first off, he, um, he has no idea what he's talking about the, with these proportions. I don't have uh, the data right in front of me, but I mean, he was claiming like 95% of all murders were committed by black people or something to that effect. Um, total disregard for, uh, the human beings that he deals with on top of which speaking of, of of supporting people with total disregard. In 2014, Mike Bloomberg spent $3 million, $3 million. That's chump change to him. 
still a lot of money in my book, um, to Governor Rick Snyder, his reelection campaign. Uh, Rick Snyder was, of course, the governor of Michigan when they basically stripped huge swaths of the Michigan population and not uncoincidentally black people of essentially their democracy where their elected leaders had no uh, control over their cities, um, particularly cities. And one of the things that uh, Rick Snyder did, if you uh, are forgetting, this is in addition, he also signed that right to work legislation in uh, 2012 destroying uh, as a direct attack on, on unions. Um, he also was, in 2014, went on to basically um, poison thousands of children in Flint, Michigan. He th- actually, thousands, he poisoned 100,000 people. But... Um, In terms of the damage it did, you have in Michigan now the number of children who have special needs has shot up since 2012 by something like 56% because they have lead poisoning, neurological poisoning, heavy metals. He poisoned these people and... Not uh, necessarily intentionally, but because he stripped, well, because he stripped the power, essentially, of elected leaders, he denied the ability of these people who knew they were being poisoned, the ability to make it stop. People complained, are there something wrong with our water? They had it tested. There's lead in our water. But there's no elected officials. There's only people appointed by Rick Snyder who are in charge of this. And they didn't need to respond because their boss was not the people who were complaining about being poisoned. Their boss was Rick Snyder, whose reelection was, at least in part, a function of Michael Bloomberg. One in five students in Flint's public schools are now e- eligible for special education. This was, in, this was actually almost a year ago. It's probably gone up a little bit. 56% the number of Flint students with special needs has gone up. That's what happens when you poison toddlers with lead. And I, I don't know if there's anything more apt than Michael Bloomberg has sharing that same sort of like notion with Rick Snyder of like, look, we know best what to do for these people. And if they complain about it, we're not going to listen. Period. Uh, the idea that Michael Bloomberg is electable because, I, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who, who are like, yeah, Bloomberg, I think he can win. The idea that he's electable. Um, when the Democratic Party, I mean, first of all, no one should vote for Michael Bloomberg. No one should vote for Michael Bloomberg. But the idea that you're going to have the black community vote for Michael Bloomberg as if they will not hear about this or they don't already know about Michael Bloomberg's history is, is almost as offensive, not quite as, uh, as Michael Bloomberg's perspective on this. I mean, this guy, the total disregard 